I think we're on like day three or four of Bobby Wagner, the Baltimore watch, and still haven't heard anything yet. But team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. And what that is is a series where you can ask any single NFL question you want to, and we answer in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. If you don't want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, then don't go to patreon.com slash vids. I appreciate you all. Again, like I always say, always appreciate all the conversation. And again, whether we agree, whether we disagree, it's all good because it's all love. I, I always appreciate hearing other people's opinions on stuff. I, I always appreciate hearing how you guys think on different subjects, whatever whatever it is that we're talking about. I always appreciate it. Always appreciate the feedback. Always appreciate, again, the dialogue, the conversation, the back and forth, as long as it's respectful. If it's not respectful, no, nah, we don't appreciate that. But if it's respectful, we do. Team, keep it clean. Great questions, as always. Let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and First question came from my boy Roger. He said, hey, what's up, man? Been listening to you for a while now. I like the content. Keep up the good work. Hey, appreciate that, Raj. Thank you. He said, this is my first question ever, so here it goes. Uh, I know everyone is saying get rid of Deshaun Elliott, but I think we should keep him and change his position. Oh, well, I mean, Ravens ain't got to get rid of him. He's a free agent. Um, but let's, let's hear about this position change. Patrick Queen struggles in coverage a lot. So why couldn't we re-sign Elliott and move him to middle linebacker, sort of like a hybrid role like uh, Neil did with the Cowboys? Oh, okay. Okay, I, I kind of like where this is going. Uh, he is already a box safety with better coverage and instinct skills and would make our defense faster. Yes, he would. Um, if he was at that linebacker role um, and, and around the box, because obviously they got Marcus Williams um, to play deep, but... You have Deshaun Elliott around the box, and that's somebody who, you know, he ain't scared. Like, he ain't scared of contact with anybody. And we need that, like, more. Uh, I know they re signed Tony Jefferson, and he'll probably have, like, sort of a Levine role, but maybe not quite. Um, maybe special teams or some defense and whatnot. But um, we'll see how he does uh, being back. Um, I know his coverage skills are not the best um, with Tony Jefferson speaking of, but um, I wonder if the Ravens, I wonder if they thought about it, like with Deshaun Elliott. I wonder if they thought about, and obviously he, he wouldn't be a starter. That's Marcus Williams. You don't pay the dude all that money and have him. Well, you know what? You're sitting on the bench. No. Um, I wonder if they thought about Deshaun Elliott being sort of that, that Anthony Levine role. Uh, to where they use him in different packages and whatnot. He's sort of the, uh, he's sort of the, I don't want to say the backup to all the backups, but he's sort of that, not even necessarily Swiss Army Knife guy, but if they just had him in something like that, where they have him involved in like different packages and whatnot, uh, put him at some different places on the field, play him at safety sometimes, play him at linebacker, move him around, have him rush the passes like he did with Anthony Levine. Uh, so I wonder if they would do that with him. Uh, but as far as this middle linebacker role, um, that would be something. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at that. I, I really wouldn't. Because, again, he he can tackle. He's a good tackler. And, again, very, very physical and fast. He got some good speed to him, too. He would add some speed to the linebacker position. And he would not be afraid to be physical uh, with those tight ends. Now, um my only concern, because I don't remember how he was in, like, man coverage. Because I know some defense, sometimes they play zone, sometimes they play man. I don't know how he would, how he is when it comes to, like, following. Like, if you got to follow a tight end, if you got to, well, not follow, if you got to cover a tight end. I just, I don't know why I cannot remember how he was with that. So, that would be something uh, that we would need to uh, be mindful of, whether it's good or bad. Because, I, again, I just don't remember. 
Um, he said he is already a box safety with better coverage and instinct skills and would make our defense faster. Everyone always talks about our lack of pass rush, but that's because... <laughs> He said, but that's because they're all old and slow. Houston, Campbell, Ford, McPhee, etc. We needed overall team speed, athleticism, and skill on defense. Just my thoughts. Hope you and your family have a good one. Appreciate that, Raj. Um, I wouldn't be mad if they did that. Uh, we're still on Bobby Wagner watch, so we'll see what happens with him. But I wouldn't be mad if they did that. Just had him as a, uh, a sort of... Um, just a, a a crazy role guy, a guy with like different roles and whatnot, a guy that you could a sort of plug and play guy. Like, all right, Deshaun, this is where we need you at on this play. This is where we need you at in this uh, in this defense. This is where we need you at in, in this situation. Can you do it for us? <laughs> he probably tell the Ravens no. Next question came from my guy Sang. He said, "Hey, Ravens, it's been a long time. You got a question for me? But I got five questions. Ooh, five questions. Five questions. Okay, here we go." Number one, if we can afford Tyron Matthew or Bobby Wagner, should we go after him, trade or trade our picks for him or Bobby Wagner? You ain't got to trade no picks, baby. They both free agents. So you ain't even got to worry about none of that. They are both free agents. So it's, it's up to the Ravens. But I would say Bobby Wagner for sure because they already signed their safety. They got their safety of the future, and hopefully everything works out wonderfully. Um, cause and it doesn't doesn't go how it went with the last safety. As long, as long as Marcus Williams ain't swinging on Chuck Clark, everything will be a okay. Uh, he said number two, J.C. Treader is a need, or Tyron Matthew or Bobby Wagner is a need. Well, I would say uh, for the Ravens. Yeah, I, I'm starting to really think about this Patrick McCarry thing, and it does seem like he may be what they do at the center position. Um, but depending on how the Ravens feel, then yeah, either J.C. Treader or Bobby Wagner will be a need. Tyron Matthew would not be a need at all because, again, they got Marcus Williams. Number three, how is your family? Oh, they, they're doing good. They're doing really good. I appreciate that. Uh, number four, should we go after a left tackle that is young if, God forbid, Ronnie Stanley gets hurt again? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ravens have to prepare as if Ronnie Stanley is not coming back. And they also have to prepare as if Ronnie Stanley will go down and miss time because he has went down every single season in his career. I'm pretty sure he's missed some time every single year and some seasons a lot more time than others. So stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, number five, <laughs> this guy, when are you playing Madden on YouTube again? Uh, probably never. Um... No, because again, yeah, because if, if for any of y'all that don't know, that's how I actually started YouTube. I started YouTube uh, playing Madden. Um, and then uh, we started talking about the Ravens, um, different stuff with the team and whatnot. And then I just fell in love with that. And after that, Madden just got to the point for me where recording it and making the videos on it, it, it just wasn't fun anymore. And this worked out. Next question came from my boy Phil. He said, Aang Raven, want to get your thoughts on this. Now, I know it's Lamar's decision not to have an agent. But if he did, do you think uh, he would get a nice-sized contract by now and it would have been negotiated and signed? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that the, the dialogue or whatever the dialogue is or is not, um, we don't really know that. Eric DaCosta has said his stuff publicly, but Lamar hasn't said anything. And if he had an agent and, and his agent could put out stuff like the Ravens be putting out stuff and the, his agent could put his own spin on things. He could leak stuff to reporters and whatnot, but he ain't got no agent. So everything is in house. So Lamar knows what's going on. Eric DeCosta and them, they know what's going on. We can only think of what could possibly be going on. But in my opinion, no, I don't think he would have. Even if he would have had the agent, I don't think he would have had a deal by now. Um. He said, my point is, do you think Lamar understands if he lets his contract run out with his fifth year option, only worth 23 mil, and does not come to an agreement before free agency in 2023, they would tag him. They could. Uh, that is a huge possibility. and It's been talked about a lot as far as them tagging him, then tagging him again. Uh, so we'll see. Now, he said, now I saw the 2022 QB tag was worth 29.7 mil, where it will probably go up a few mil next season. But do you think Lamar knows if he's tagged, he'll be making nearly 10 million less than a regular franchise quarterback contract, which is 40 to 45 million? Are you sure that that's how much it is? 
The franchise tag is the uh, it's the average of the top five highest paid quarterbacks. In the, I wonder if you were looking at a different tag, um, because it's there's no way it, it, there's no way that it's that low. Well, no, no, no. You said the twenty nine mil. That's for this season. Um, oh, okay. So you talking about thirty five? Even that? No, because Mahomes he got hit. Now Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson was at forty five mil per. Patrick Mahomes, I believe he's at 45 mil per. Josh Allen is at like 43 mil per. Dak Prescott is at, I think, 40 mil per. So even whoever the next highest paid quarterback, which, oh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is at 50. He's at 50. So, no, Lamar's straight. He's straight. <laughs> with, the fran with the franchise tag, yeah, it's not guaranteed. I mean, no, it is guaranteed. It's guaranteed for that one year and that one year only. Um, but yeah, he, <laughs> he he would be straight. Man, he wouldn't be making no ten mil less than the average. No, he would be making uh, a good amount of money, whatever the average is of the fifty mil, forty five, forty five, forty three, and forty. And maybe if I miss somebody, maybe I did, but he would be straight uh, for that year. But again, it doesn't provide the long term uh, stability. Uh, but I'm sure if Lamar was like, uh, I ain't feeling the Ravens so right now, or I just I don't want to commit to them right now, then I'm sure he would be a okay uh, with the franchise take. Next question came from my boy Daddy Gaming. He said, "Hey, Raven, I hope you're well, bro. I got a question for you. How come you think the Ravens will draft a wide receiver in the first three rounds? I see so many good wide receiver prospects, but with our current wide receiver room, would they really go out and draft another guy?" Hope to hear your thoughts on this stuff. Take it easy. Appreciate it, man. Um, now, the only way that I feel like this could change, I don't feel like it will, but the only way that I feel like this could change was if the Ravens went and snatched up a superstar wide receiver, or even if it wasn't a superstar wide receiver. If they got a Marcus Williams type of wide receiver on offense. Because the and what I mean when I say that a Marcus Williams type of receiver, obviously not a receiver that plays corner or defensive back. Um, but Marcus Williams, he he's a good safety. Is he a great safety? No, he's a good safety, though. And he has the potential to be great. And he's up and coming and he's not old and washed up. And he's really entering his prime. And he shows you that he can really play in this league. And he's really established a name for himself in this league. Is he a household name right now? No, he's not. Not yet. But he has that potential to be. And as, as long as he don't swing on Chuck, then everything will be okay. But that's the, this, that's the type of guy that I will want the Ravens to get. But well, if, if they don't do that, if they don't trade or sign somebody who's like that, then this still stands. But that's the only thing that will change them drafting and receiving the first three rounds. Um, Miles Boykin, unfortunately, I, I don't think he's going to be with the Ravens uh, this year. I, I don't. Um, and after, they, they are clearly invested in Hollywood. Um, they are clearly invested in Rashad Bateman. Uh, but after that, they don't have any clear investments. They got potentials. They got some potential guys. You see potential with James Prochet, but Ravens, they ain't in they ain't on, they ain't on no James Prochet like that. Again, and I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but we got to remind people like, hey, this dude, despite it being <laughs> a beatdown loss, he caught seven passes for 76 yards versus the Bengals. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Or what was he, a fifth or sixth round pick? I forgot what round he got drafted in, but they, they could be like, oh, man, James Prochet caught all those passes? For all those yards, wow, okay. We lost the game, but you know what, man? He, he showed us some stuff. What are we going to do with him next game? Ah, uh, inactive. Then he was inactive again. They're not invested in him. And I know a lot of fans like to say, oh, James Prochet, James Prochet. And I'm like, yeah, James Prochet. We know that boy can catch. He can catch. But Ravens, they don't look at him like that. Ravens don't care about no James Prochet, man. I hate to say it like that, but it's real. They've, they've shown you that through their actions. They don't care about him like that. We look at Tylen, Tylen Wallace is tough. He was a rookie last year, and then um, on that fake punt, he got hurt. He was in there for a couple plays, but and he had a whole lot in front of him too. 
But being a fourth round pick, it's scary. Being a fourth round pick at wide receiver for the Ravens, that's scary stuff right there. That's scary stuff. Devin Duvernay. Um, Devin Duvernay, I think the Ravens like him as a sort of a weapon. Not really as a wide receiver, though. Sort of a weapon. Um, and they, they, they don't even play him to his strengths. I mean, that's a, that's a big issue with just how the Ravens play a lot of their wide receivers. They don't play them to their strengths. They don't put them in positions to where the, the receivers can take advantage of their skill sets. And that that's an issue in itself. Um, but, again, if the Ravens don't trade for somebody or sign somebody who is, again, the Marcus Williams on offense, um, then, yeah, first three rounds for sure. Because this will be them, um, and I think it would be like a, a a big guy, big guy. I know Bateman like six. What Bateman like six one, six foot six one. Um, but a big guy with some good speed. So I think a six three, six four guy. But somebody who's like that in college. Now I know I keep hearing, oh yeah, this this draft class is loaded with talented wide receiver. Okay, all right, cool. You got Drizzy Drake. Drake London, right. okay, cool, cause he he a little shifty. He got some like underrated speed for a big man now. Like he reminded me, um, he reminds me of uh, Antoine Wesley. Um, to where I remember when the Ravens first signed him as an under was it Antoine Wesley? No, yeah, Antoine Wesley. I think that's the one who went to the Cardinals, right? To where he um he's tall. He's tall, but he's a little shiftier than you think. It's like, oh, okay, now, all right, now, Drake, see you. Um, so that that would be nice. Cause, cause what we need um at wide receiver is yak. We need yak, and that's part of being a playmaker. Getting yak, not just catching the ball and going down. Not just catching the ball. No, no, you catch the ball, making somebody miss. Catching the ball, breaking a tackle. Catching the ball and in stride and, and just hitting it to the end zone. That's what we need. When I talk about playmaking, it's it's all of the above. Ravens need that in a major way because that we keep talking about everybody making everybody else's job that much easier. When it comes to offense, if they if we like got more yak, because that's something that the Ravens, oh my goodness, they've been struggling in yak for for a long time, a very long time. Cause it's like Ravens uh, with a lot of their passes. It's even on if, if it's a deep pass, then that deep pass once it's caught, it's either a touchdown. There's not much yak involved. When do we see that stuff? When do we see it? When do we see a short pass and it's oh they hit it? Oh they went crazy with it. When do we see a deep like again for a deep pass when it's caught? It's usually like all right, it's caught in the end zone. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing for that, but the the yak has been missing for a long time, like consistently. It's here and there, but it's been missing overall from Ravens offense for a while. So they need some real yards after the catch guys because it's, it's been a problem. So that's, that's what I would be looking for in a wide receiver uh, for the Ravens. Um, somebody that can add to that. Because, again, <clears throat> Bateman, you, you, you see it there. You see it there. Hollywood, you see it there. You see it there. But we just need more. Need a lot more. So, and Mandrews, like, I remember, what was it a game last year where Mandrews was, like, dragging all the Browns, like, down the field when he caught up, he caught up, or was it the Chiefs? Or was it both? Or was it the Colts? I don't know. I mean, it was one of, one of them three teams, maybe two of those three teams, or maybe all three. But Mandrews was, like, dragging I think it was the Browns, though. But, um, we just need, we need more of that. Um, but, yes, wide receiver in the first three rounds. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Rodell. He said, put your cap on. Uh-oh. Good evening, Miss Engraven. I'm not here to bug you today, but instead assign you a mission. If you accept this mission, keep reading. If not, disregard and go to the next subscriber's question. Okay. Nah, let's keep going. Your assignment today is to plan, essentially, four hours worth of your best pitch to a free agent. Real or imaginary free agent. Your free agent is arriving at 12 p.m. and leaving Baltimore at 4 p.m. Your job is to tell us how your pitch to a free agent will go. Number one, where would you take them first? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I would probably take them to Jimmy's Seafood. Reason? Because they have really good drinks. Jimmy Seafood, their, their drinks are really good. Um, the the whole crab cakes thing, it, it's so funny when you see people say, man, like, i seen it on Twitter a lot. Like, they, they, people would be like, oh, man, Ravens got to be able to offer something besides free free crab cakes. Um, 
But I would go there and I'd be like, all right, hey, Jimmy's, we got this potential free agent coming through. Hook us up. And I'd be like, hey, I'm, I'm getting a free meal, too. So hey, I'm, I'm trying to get, get fed, too. And if I ain't got to pay for it, hey, and it's good food, too, that you ain't got to pay for. Oh, yeah, I'll be with that all day. So like hook this potential free agent up and I'm getting hooked up, too. Um, but yeah, and the, the the vibe there is nice. I like the um I like the outside seating. Uh, I, I I love it out there because it's it's chill. It ain't they don't they don't be bugs because it's, it's not by the water. Um, it is outside though. But yeah, I like the outside seating. Um, I like how like that that dark gray or black the the walls that just it's like a simple simple decoration, but it's effective. It gets the job done. Um, the service there is pretty good. Um, and again, the, the food is good too. The the food is is very good too. Um, I really like their uh, their lamb. Their lamb is really good. Um, and if the the free agent if if he likes crabs or crab cakes, blah, 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 you already know what time it is. But yeah, that's where I would take them. All right, second part. What's your sale? <laughs> Cause it sure ain't money. <laughs> but um, my sale. We talking offense or defense? Defense, oh yeah, we, we got it all day. Defense, hey, you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with a Ray Lewis. I'm sure you're familiar with a Ed Reed. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Lodi Nana, Terrell Suggs. Um, even guys that didn't have the same name as a lot of the, uh, the Baltimore Raven greats on defense, they still not only made a name for themselves in Baltimore, but they made a name for themselves uh, in the NFL. Uh, they ended up becoming established players, and they not only had success with the Ravens on defense, but even after they left the Ravens, they still continued to have success uh, throughout their careers and ended up getting some of the biggest contracts of their lives. So depending on the age of this player, this that conversation can go either way because we could either be talking about him playing for the Ravens for a couple years and moving on or him retiring uh, as a Raven. So if it's like somebody older, veteran guy like, hey, you you've already made your name in this league. Why not go out with a bang with one of the teams that prides itself on defense? You know that you would be valued as a member of the Baltimore Ravens. You know that the, the fans, they will love you. Um, and, you know, we pride ourselves on defense. Last year, uh, we took a step back. But if you could be a part of this organization, we're ushering in a sort of new era on defense. We had had Wink here for a while and we love Wink and we wish him well over there with the Giants, except the game that we played him this year. But we had Wink over here for the longest. But we're now bringing in Mike McDonald. So you as a veteran player, what your job can be is to help usher in this new offense we got some young guys on defense i mean usher in this new defense we got some young guys on defense you're a veteran player you could help show them the way they would definitely respect you because your resume speaks for itself um and that would all, that would be all that would need to be said you would be a, a cornerstone piece in what this defense could be uh over these next couple of years and we want you to be a special part of it that's what I would tell him if it was deep. Now, offense, I would say, <laughs> hey, maybe g Rock might be out of here after this year. So next year, it would be might be better for you. Might, next year might be straight. But now on offense, um, on offense, I think it would be a much harder sale. Because um, depending on the position, uh, if it's wide receiver, oof, boy, I would have to make some empty promises. <laughs> I would tell him, like, hey. We're trying to really change what we do on offense. We're trying to um, really shift what we do on offense. And I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Marquise Brown. You're familiar with Rashad Bateman. Um, but we're, we're missing just somebody like you. Um, you would be an excellent compliment to both of those receivers. Uh, we also have Mark Andrews. I'm sure you're familiar with him as well. Yeah, one of the best tight ends in the league and was the best tight end in the league last year. Um, if you recall... Under Lamar Jackson, uh, when he was still healthy, um, and he wasn't even fully healthy last year, so we didn't even get to see a full Lamar Jackson. But under Lamar Jackson, we were one of the top passing offenses in the league last year, and we didn't have our top three running backs. All of them were injured. Our offensive line was banged up, and we still managed to be a top passing offense in the league last year. Just imagine the possibilities if we could add you to that add you to what we were banking on last year but unfortunately due to injuries everything came crashing down 
Do you want to be a part of that? We would love you here. And we would we just really want a, a, a sort of culture shift, not even a culture change, but a culture shift to where the fans know what to expect from us on defense. But we want them to really be able to expect something from the offense that is that much more, that much more. And if you could be a part of that, we would love it here. Finish your crab cake. So that's what I would do for them. Um, <laughs> one bad thing about Baltimore. <laughs> um, one bad thing about Baltimore. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, now, sometimes. Um, some of our coaches can be a little arrogant. Um, they can be a little stuck in their ways and they may not want to adapt as quick as we would like them to. Um, but hopefully if, if you, your, your voice is respected, your voice would be respected in a locker room and among the coaching staff too. Um, if you, you seem approachable and our coaches, they can be approachable for the most part as well. Um, I'm sure your voice will be heard, so you'll be able to, especially as a veteran in this league, you've seen this and been there, done that. So you will be able to share exactly what you're seeing with our coaching staff. So hopefully they can implement some of the things and changes that you see. So that would be the bad thing. Uh, number four, why they shouldn't pass on Baltimore. <clears throat> you shouldn't pass on Baltimore because we're close. We're very close and we want you to be part of this opportunity. You see that quarterback over there? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you heard of him before. Number eight. Yeah, he's something very special. Uh, but so is this entire football team. And if you want to be part of something special, uh, we want you to be part of it. And we want you to help us get over that hump. Because we're, we're close. We're, we're right there. And we've been right there for the past couple of years. But we just seem to be missing something. And you could be a part of that, of what we're missing. Uh, and he said, number five, etc. So I guess that's it. Shout out to Graven.